First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Welcome to WUFT News First at Five. I'm Isabella Leandri. And I'm Avery Lotz. Thanks for joining us. A 32-year-old man is in custody after being charged with starting five fires inside of and around HCA Florida West Hospital in Ocala. Get on the ground. Daniel Holmes was arrested Sunday evening by Ocala police after police and fire rescue teams responded to three fires within the hospital. According to the arrest report, Holmes told a hospital visitor he encountered in the elevator, it's about to get a whole lot hotter. Then he ignited flames in a coffee station and in two restrooms, using newspapers, and attempted to light a box of disposable mass on fire with a lighter, but was stopped by a hospital employee. While extinguishing the initial three fires, reports of two other blazes came in, one in an adjacent residence and the other in the woods near Rasmussen College. I've been here for over eight years and um, we've never responded to a call where simultaneous fires, which were suspected to be arson, occurred <laughs> at the same time. Holmes was arrested in an AT&T parking lot. Both witnesses and hospital surveillance footage confirmed he was the suspect. He was charged with four counts of arson and one count of battery for throwing a phone and the box of masks at the employee who confronted him. No one was hurt and the flames were quickly extinguished. Ocala Fire Rescue thanks HCA employees for their efforts in extinguishing the fire. One of the final steps of a Gainesville murder case will begin tomorrow morning. 24-year-old Eugene Javon Patrick changed his not guilty plea earlier this month. He accepted a plea deal and pled guilty to manslaughter in the death of 36-year-old Bobby Bernard Hopkins in May 2021. Patrick's sentencing hearing is scheduled for tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. We will be sending our photojournalist team to the courtroom to cover the story, so keep an eye out for that on WUFT.org. A teenage boy is dead after another driver crashed into his motorcycle at an intersection in Alachua last night. FHP officials say a man was driving a pickup truck north on County Road 237 with a trailer attached. At the same time, an 18-year-old boy from the city of Alachua was going west on West State Road 235. At the intersection, they collided. The motorcyclist was killed in the crash and the 45-year-old truck driver got minor injuries. State troopers say they are still investigating the crash. Two Alachua County organizations teamed up to host a two-day conference to help recently incarcerated people get reintroduced to society. Representatives from the Alachua County Library District and Partnership for Strong Families held workshops focused on mental health and finding jobs. The first day was today and a library manager says it went well. There were seminars on job searching and mental wellness in the workplace. On day two, participants will be building their own workforce reentry kits. Community partners like Assurance Wellness will be, be providing free cell phones, professional clothing, library cards, and other resources. They say April showers bring May flowers, but it's been pretty dry the past few weeks. That changed today with some rain in the afternoon. WUFT's Daniela Rudolph joins us now with the weather forecast. Can we expect this rainy trend to stay? That's right, ladies. And you are lucky if you like the rain like me because it's going to stay with us for the remainder of the week. So stay with me to see when and where you're going to be impacted. Let's jump right now to our campus cam. You can see we do have those areas of clouds that are gonna be bringing precipitation this evening. So stay with me to see what's happening if you're heading out this evening. But right now, 78 degrees. Let's take a look at our temperatures. We're a little cooler as of the same time yesterday, down four in Gainesville, a little bit of a jump down in Ocala, but it's not going to be feeling that cool because we are feeling relatively humid. So definitely stay with me to see how that's gonna impact you. Take a look at your Tuesday morning lows. Gainesville, 61, 59 in Lake City and 61 in Crystal River. This general clouded look is patchy fog. Back to you, that's all I have for now. Governor Ron DeSantis heads abroad this week to visit a series of allied countries. The official purpose of the cross-country trip is for an international trade mission, according to DeSantis' office. Today, he visited Tokyo and met with Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. The two exchanged views on regional affairs. Kishida said he hopes DeSantis' visit will lead to the further strengthening of Japan-U.S. and Japan-Florida relationships. 
DeSantis will also visit Israel, South Korea, and the United Kingdom. A retirement home for horses with sprawling green pastures, doting caretakers, and all the carrots they can dream of. WUFT's Lauren Miranda takes us there to see how these pampered ponies live. Mill Creek Farm is home to over 130 retirees. Ranging from former mounted patrol to surrendered pets, the retirement home for horses takes in steeds who have nowhere else to turn. So our mission here is we take in a horses over 20 years of age uh, that have been seized by law enforcement and other frontline rescue groups and cruelty cases, abandonment cases. And then we also take in uh, active police and military horses. Um, we feel they've done their public service and they deserve a great retirement. With over 330 acres of open field, the horses have plenty of room to roam without fear. Selfless volunteers like Megan Williams dedicate time to creating bonds with the rescued animals. For some of these guys, they've come from really difficult backgrounds. So part of my job is getting horses that aren't used to being handled and learn how to trust people again. Just like people are different and building relationships with people looks different, the same thing is true for them. Recent hire Sean Bosley says the farm runs on more than just yard work. I came out and met Paul and the team and the horses and the love and dedication from everybody. And I stopped looking, deleted my ND and started the next day. <laughs> dedication and love, two things that the retirement home for horses couldn't run without. When they arrive, each horse receives veterinary care and weekly groomings. I come three days a week to groom. And some of the ones that I groom are a little more challenging. And then it's just a matter of being observant, how they react. And once you find out how to deal with that, then you can build a relationship. But they've taught me to just slow down, take a breath, relax. If you meet a foal you really fancy, you can help contribute to its care costs as a sponsor. You can also visit the Retirement Home's website to find other ways to donate and help the horses. And of course, visitors are always welcome, as long as they're willing to pay the admission price. Lauren Miranda, the lead. To see more about this program and other stories we're covering right now, check out the lead on our Instagram at WUFT News. The Walt Disney Company continues to make cuts to their workforce. This marks the second round of layoffs since last month. Find out just how many employees will lose their jobs and what that means for the future of Disney after the break. You're watching WUFT TV News. Disney's second of three rounds of layoffs began today. The layoffs will result in 7,000 job cuts, which is about 3% of the company's workforce. The cuts will save Disney around $5.5 billion. It's a part of a reorganization plan that was announced by CEO Bob Iger earlier this year. The layoffs affect Disney Entertainment and ESPN employees as well. It also comes amid Governor Ron DeSantis' ongoing battle with Disney. Just last week, the governor threatened to place a jail near the happiest place on earth as a punishment for woke behavior. You only have a few more days to use that Bed Bath & Beyond coupon kicking around in your house. The chain department store declared bankruptcy yesterday and store representatives say they will stop accepting coupons on Wednesday. The company's profits took a hit after stores closed for months during the pandemic. Bed Bath & Beyond managers have tried to cut costs, but more than half of the stores went out of business last year. If you're making one last shopping trip there, you can expect some deep discounts and everything must go sales. Neighbors are coming to help families who lost their homes in a sweeping landslide this weekend. Weather forecaster Daniela Rudolph is here to tell us what happened and the science behind it. Yes, Avery, landslides are so difficult to predict because even though they happen in every state, they happen really fast. Onlookers watched in horror as a landslide in Utah took out multiple oh homes on Saturday. Several other homeowners were forced to evacuate just in case. Nearly 80 people from the community gathered at the scene today with boxes ready to help with cleanup efforts. Draper City officials say that other homes in this neighborhood need to be inspected to make sure that they're structurally sound. They say this happened because the snowpack supporting the ground is melting. This softens the soil and adds extra moisture to it, causing instability. The added weight of the home causes the soil to collapse, creating a landslide. Although we're not expecting any landslides here in Gainesville, it's going to be a wet week ahead, so definitely stay with me to see where and how you're going to be impacted after the break.
You're watching WUFT TV News. So it is going to be a wet week ahead. We are going to be seeing those showers coming in more this week, starting this evening. But let's take a look at what's happening right now with our current storm tracker. As you can see, we do have a lot of precipitation happening right now. It's caused by the stationary front, followed by this low pressure system. So a good way to remember the difference between a high and a low pressure system is high is high in the sky. The sun is out, the sky is clear, and you can see beautiful skies and sunny skies but when we have that low pressure it's where we see these areas of precipitation and heavy weather but let's take a look at that muggy meter so we are seeing those um, showers happening but it's not really going to decrease the temperatures although it looks like they're going to be cooler it is feeling really humid peaking on wednesday at 65 degrees wednesday thursday and friday are days for the most chances of showers but there is an alert for the rest of the week so do keep that in mind if you plan on traveling let's take a look at what's doing right now to our temperatures here in north central florida 75 in gainesville 68 in lake city and 79 in crystal river so those temperatures are cooler but it is going to still be feeling warm and humid and muggy but let's take a look at the campus cam right now as i said 76 here in gainesville right now you can see those areas of clouded area that's going to be bringing that precipitation later on this evening let's jump to hour by hour to see exactly how we're going to be impacted tonight. Right now, around 76 degrees with a 30% chance of rain. For the remainder of the evening, it should be clearing out around 9 to 10 p.m. So if you are headed out on the town this evening, just take an umbrella with just to be safe. Take a look at our storm tracker right now. As you can see, the most of the uh, precipitation is happening here around Ocala and the Orlando area. If you see there by Sanford, we have that orange triangle, which indicates that it is an area of severe thunderstorms. So please keep a lookout for those emergency alerts if you are residing in that area. But tomorrow, if you're heading out to campus, let's take a look at what is happening. Starting out at 67, going to 81 in the afternoon, but there are going to be thunderstorms. So please do keep that in mind. But that's all from me for now. So back to the desk. Spring training is about to be in full force around the area for high school athletes. Especially those gearing up for the gridiron. They're focused on laces, tackles, and gains. As the Wilson Red Devils geared up for football last fall, they had a ton to prove following a 1-8 2021 season. A new coach and a new attitude spawned the rise of the Red. Boom. You're either going to get on board or you're going to get gone. He's very specific. If you don't do it his way, you don't last. He ain't gonna scream too much unless he has to. He ain't gonna smile. He ain't gonna never smile. But he's always happy though, I can tell you that much. You just won't you won't know unless you know him. Here we go. Here we go. I've been coached for twenty nine years and I've never seen the stands full like that at Williston. Enjoy being around the kids. It's different every year. You have a different team, you have a different dynamic. You have different chemistry, and every year's a, a new year. It's challenging, and it's something I've always enjoyed doing. And when I quit enjoying, I know that's when it's time to get out. What did Coach Pruitt tell you guys? Play ball. Calm down. Fight to the end. You can check out the whole story on WUFT.org. Thanks, Juliana. I can't wait to see more. Speaking of sports, it was a big weekend for Gator sports, especially on the Diamond. A big weekend, but maybe not a great weekend. That's right, Avery. Some tough outings for Gator baseball and softball, but there was some good news. Gators lacrosse continues to plow through opponents, folks. They can't lose. Another Gator team brought home an SEC championship. I'll tell you all about it next on my final edition of sports. You're watching WUFT TV News. I'm Will Levinson. It's time to talk sports. It has not been a fruitful weekend for Gators softball. Florida came out firing in Rocky Top, scoring the game's first four runs, and they kept it going, jumping out to a 9-3 lead. But the fourth-ranked Lady Vols stormed their way back to hand the Gators back-to-back -back losses 11-10. Florida has a chance to avoid the sweep tonight with one more in Knoxville at 7 p.m. It wasn't any better for the men on the diamond. Gators baseball lost their first series of the season to South Carolina getting swept in Columbia. 
In the updated college baseball rankings released by D1 Sunday, the Gators dropped one spot from three to four as the Gamecocks jumped Florida to three for the sweep. Now at 31 and 10, Florida will look to bounce back tomorrow night against UNF with a home weekend series against Missouri on deck. Gators lacrosse cannot be stopped, folks. For the seventh consecutive time, Florida came away with the win. No win was easier than what we saw Saturday over Vanderbilt. The Gators ran the Commodores out of the building. Florida flew out of the gates, going up 8-1 in quarter one and cruising to a 22-6 win. It was senior day at Donald R. Disney Stadium, but it was sophomore Emma Lopinto who once again shined. Watch her shimmy groove move and rocket. Lasered it into the back of the net. Ooh, that is sweet. It is the fifth straight game. Lopinto has scored at least three goals. She has 46 goals this season. 46. That's a three goal a game average for all you mathematicians out there. Next up for Florida is a trip up north to face Jacksonville on Wednesday. Another week, another SEC championship for Florida, this time on the golf course. It's the 16th conference title for Gator men's golf and their first since 2011. Florida has now brought home five titles across all sports this year. Hope they've got room in that trophy case. Golf head coach J.C. Deacon said while there's still more to win, a conference title is pretty cool. I told him yesterday, no one's going to hand us a spot to that national championship. we got to go and earn it at regionals. So it'll be back to work, but we're, we're going to take a day or two to, to really let this sink in. And we're, we're the SEC champions, and that's really freaking cool. Here we go. Welcome to Draft Week. In just four days, we'll finally learn where all the top prospects will land. One of those top prospects, former Gator quarterback Anthony Richardson, is a lock for the first round and could go as high as number two. AR is set to become the fifth Gator quarterback picked in the first round all time, joining Steve Spurrier, John Reeves, Rex Grossman, and Tim Tebow. So where could Richardson land? The Indianapolis Colts could be an option. They pick fourth. Teams like the Seahawks, Raiders, and Titans could all trade up to ensure they get Richardson's talent. Boy, oh boy, so much intrigue, so much excitement. It's all going to go down Thursday at 8 p.m. from Kansas City. Dads and their kids in Alachua County are bonding even more after going to an event focused on the fun of fatherhood. The special afternoon kicked off at Sanders Indoor Practice Facility where the Gators train and run routes. University of Florida football coach Billy Napier hosted the All Pro Dad event this Saturday. Napier shared parenting tips while dads and their kids tried on on-field activities like tickle tackle and football drills. All Pro Dad is a Florida-based but national nonprofit. This is the first time the organization has brought this event to Gainesville since 2018. Before we go, one last check on the weather. Thank you, ladies. So looking at the bus stop outlook tomorrow, if you're dropping the kids at school, starting out in a foggy morning at 62, but make sure you do pack them with an umbrella because it is going to be thunderstorming at 81 degrees in the afternoon. Now, this is a great opportunity to have a talk with the little ones about how to stay safe during severe weather. So definitely that's a great way to bond, just like we saw in the story previously, but that's all for me for weather. Back to the desk. Sadly, this was our last show as well as a lot of other members of our team. We've had the best four years here at UFNW UFT and we're going to miss delivering your Monday night news. If you'll miss us while we're gone, your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org. Thank you for spending the semester and the last four years with us. Have a wonderful night. Go Gators! <laughs> <laughs>